Thank you, right honorable speaker and members. I rise to second the motion to pay tribute to the honorable Cecilia Atimogwal under Rule 60 of our Rules of Procedure. Right honorable speaker, um, as I get started, I would like to convey a message of condolence from uh, the honorable Chagulanyi Senator Murobat, who was in the 10th parliament with uh, the honorable Cecilia Ogwal also from Dr. Kiza Besige, who was in the Constituent Assembly, together with uh, Atat Cecilia Ogwal. And also from uh, the Honorable Elias Lukwago, who was in the Ninth Parliament. Even though Atat was not in Parliament at the time, they were in the trenches together. They would have loved to be here in the gallery, but they are unable to because uh, they are under house arrest and some on the run from the military. Right, Honourable Speaker. Honourable members, Honourable members, can we listen the good thing? The house arrest is not by this parliament. So can we have the motion seconded? Right, Honourable Speaker and Honourable colleagues, the nation has again suffered a great loss with the passing of the Honourable Cecilia Atimo Gual. Dokolo District Woman Representative in Parliament. We condole with the family, relatives, friends, the people of Lango sub-region and the country at large upon this untimely loss. While we mourn the loss of our gallant colleague, right honorable speaker, we pay tribute and celebrate a life that was well lived. The honorable Cecilia Ogual was a stateswoman of outstanding and unparalleled dignity, a mother, an inspirational leader, one of the few politicians who exemplified impeccable work ethics and acted in the interest of her nation. She embodied peace and was an ardent advocate of affirmative action, rights of women and the girl child in particular, but above all, she was a champion of the rule of law and democratic governance. While Uganda may never see another attack, Cecilia Ogwal, she inspired countless men and women of valor, she deposited herself in many of us. Throughout her life as a leader, the Honorable Cecilia Ogwal consistently exhibited compassion and a strong commitment to foster our national democracy. She gained notoriety when she blatantly opposed the monolithic movement system, which had outlawed multipartism in our country. It was this bold stance that earned her the appellation Iron Lady, a respect she greatly worked with in life and guarded in action and candid speech. It is with great respect and gratitude that we extend this tribute to Atat, a true guardian of parliamentary institutional memory and a repository of rich experience. Relatedly, we should credit Atat for her effort in the global campaign for women emancipation and empowerment in our country. Women emancipation and empowerment are broadly encompassing concepts and require concerted efforts and comprehensive approach to fusion. 
It's not enough to boast about the number of women in leadership. These statistics should be accompanied by equitable and efficient service delivery. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the citizenry desire leadership that is cognizant of the plight and aspirations of its citizens and an economy that creates opportunities for all. Right Honorable Speaker, this August House should take cognizance of the Honorable Cecilia Gual's achievements and wise counsel, which will forever be relieved in her towering legacy and profound impact on the downtrodden. She was an astute leader, seasoned politician, excellent banker, successful business personality, and a pioneer on various fronts. She was one of the founders of the Housing Finance Bank and the first female chairperson of Uganda Development Bank. Her tenure as the Secretary General of the Uganda People's Congress, UPC, from 1985 to 1992, was quite transformative in our country, as we saw. She also played a pivotal role in the Constituent Assembly and participated in the drafting and promulgation of the 1995 Constitution. As a member of the Forum for Democratic Change, she diligently served as the Opposition Chief Whip and as a Parliamentary Commissioner. Indeed, her remarkable skills, leadership skills, enabled the Opposition to achieve tremendously during the Ninth Parliament. It is absurd that the Constitution process that she dedicated herself to was gradually eroded by the ruling government. Her passing has occurred at a time of heightened concern among Ugandans regarding human rights violations ranging from enforced disappearance to detention without trial. The Honorable Ogual, in her interview with the Observer paper in 2018, published in an article titled, I Survived Death 12 Times, disclosed that she had been targeted and repressed for her alignment with the opposition. This repression has been recurrent to all politicians who have challenged the regime. When shall these predatory tendencies stop? We unreservedly celebrate the Honorable Cecilia Ogwal's distinguished service to the legislature and her unwavering commitment to constitutionalism, the rule of law, human rights, equity, and inclusiveness. Without a doubt, she has played her part. Fellow Ugandans, I wish to remind you that we have not yet attained the desired freedoms and enjoyment of human rights guaranteed under the Constitution that she vehemently fought for. It is our constitutional obligation to pursue full realization, respect, uphold, and protection of our rights. This obligation, right, Honorable Speaker, transcends our political affiliations and stature in society. What is required of us is to rise to the occasion and demand for what rightly and constitutionally belongs to us. Therefore, do not wait for another attack, Cecilia, to rise and fight for you. Rather, be a Cecilia Ogwal in your own right and for the common good. The passing of our esteemed colleague, the Honorable Ogwal, and many other similar deaths from foreign hospitals continue to expose the lacuna and deficiencies in Uganda's healthcare system. Many Ugandans succumb to treatable diseases, a consequence attributed to corruption and failure of the government to prioritize the health sector. This is why a handful of able Ugandans continue to seek medical attention abroad due to lack of confidence in the country's capacity to provide comprehensive health care for its citizens. This lamentable reality highlights the urgency to address systemic issues within Uganda's health care sector to ensure that our sovereign nation is not only capable, but also trusted to administer proper medical treatment to all Ugandans. Right Honorable Speaker, to the best of my recollection, from the newsroom up to date, where I was, I have known Atat Cecilia as a leader who detested corruption in all its moral and legal forms. In all its moral and legal forms. We should therefore applaud Atat for her clean record and for advocating for equitable sharing of the national resources to ensure national cohesion and balanced national development. We humbly urge this August House to seize every lawful opportunity and ensure that development disparities plaguing our country are thoroughly addressed through the budgetary process and effective legislation. As the Bible reminds us in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. We celebrate a life well lived 
and implore ourselves to emulate Atat and the values that she embodied. May the Almighty God grant her eternal rest. Rest in peace, the Honorable Atim Cecilia Barbara Ogwal. I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you, Leader of Opposition. As we pay tribute to a very peaceful lady, a uniting lady, a peace-loving lady, for today, let's talk the goods, the deeds of a tat. Let's first put politics aside. We will discuss politics on Tuesday. Let's discuss politics when there is nobody in front of us. But uh, I also thank the president for having been a good friend to Atat. Those two were inseparable. And uh, we may disagree, but respectfully. Let's talk about the good of Atat because this is the last time we are having her here. Can I have Honorable Zijan? The Dean of Independence, my representative. Thank you, Your Right. Madam Speaker, for those of us who were in the sixth parliament, we have a lot to say, but many of us will be able to publish our tributes in the other media, because time will not allow to say all we would wish to, to say. The members of the sixth parliament are both in this chamber and in the gallery. I want to salute them for showing up in full force to remember a gallant stateswoman. I also wish to salute the spirit in which this debate is taking place. Imad Cecilia Gual was a fun-loving lady. I don't think she would be happy to see people mournful and being too solemn. So the spirit in which we are debating is also a true spirit of what kind of person she was. Out there in the foyer where the body lay for viewing, I had a little chat with one of those who was with us in the sixth parliament, the Honorable Dr. Miriam Matemba, and I asked her, what would you say? Then she said, only one thing. Cecilia Ogual was always for God and for country. I think nothing summarizes the person we are celebrating more than that. I think the Rotarians have the four-way test. I think for us she had a two-way test. Is it God's will? Does it serve my country? Full stop. I also met our High Commissioner Ambassador Nimisha Madivani, and she said she celebrates Imad Cecilia Gual for advocating for more money to improve our embassies and the work of those who serve our country abroad. We have had the CISCOP, which you presided over, Madam Speaker. We have had NAM, now we have G77. We live in a global village. As part of our tribute to Imat, let us really support our missions abroad. Because those are the ones who advocate for better trade, who can explain some of the laws that we pass here better than anybody else, because they live there. Some of us can visit, but we don't have the networks. So, and no wonder, because of her international reach, 
there has been this outpouring of tributes from far and wide. She had a loving heart that never tired of giving. She always spoke about what it means to be a woman in politics, that it is not fun. In fact, she called it a journey of pain. There's a book called Dancing Backwards in High Hills. <laughs> now, I'll send a copy to Owopa. That's what it is for women. It's like dancing backwards in high heels. And I think men would even have it rougher if they tried. She was capable of speaking truth to power. We need people who can talk to powerful people. Not necessarily in public, but even in private. We need that. All of us know powerful people. All of us, whether you are the president of Uganda, whether you are the speaker of parliament, whether you are the leader of a party, you need people who can come and tell you what you look like and put the mirror in front of your eyes. She had that ability. And every country needs that. This is the time to summon our elder statesmen and elder stateswomen to call us to order, we were still on the front lines. She, she also debunked the fact that a powerful woman does not necessarily have to be feminine or have a family or be a loving wife. Some people think the powerful women don't have husbands. It is, it is a tribute to Imad Cecilia Ogwal that you can actually be a powerful advocate for women's rights without simply degenerating into cantankerousness. <laughs> <laughs> so we also thank Musei Lame Kogwal for standing by Imad Cecilia. I remember Imad Cecilia teasing the president that you are only counting 50 years of marriage. I've been at it longer than you. Now, that is the kind of person we are saying bye to. She was a torchbearer for freedom. She was a, a person who believed in pluralism. She denounced the stigmatization of people simply because they belong to a particular political party or to a particular tribe. She committed herself to her family like all of us should. All of us have our, have our family stories. Some of us have dropped out of that arrangement. Thanks to Imad Cecilia. <laughs> yeah, it, it is important to have your family by you. It is very, very important because you members of parliament passed a law primarily to protect the family. And in tribute to Imad Cecilia, it is important that we, we thank her for going out of her way to explain what the anti-homosexuality law was all about to people who were refusing to understand. She said it was not targeting homosexuals, it targeted aggravated defilement, rape, whether heterosexual or homosexual. Because out there, there are those who are trying to distort our message. So Imad Cecilia Ogwal has been speaking out for Uganda. She was the embodiment of a true patriot. She was assertive, but she also had empathy. She could understand without judging. And the fact that you understand does not mean you have agreed. That is how she was a complex person who was very easy to deal with. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a condolence message from Cecilia Ogwal as a champion for those who had none, the soul of multi-party politics in this country, and the lioness of the Ugandan parliament. A woman whose name graces more than 5,000 motions and bills and a mentor and a friend are to many of us. I think she was one of the greatest legislators of our time, and I want to remember her for two things. The first one, her defense and advocacy for faith issues and marriage issues. 
she defended the institution of marriage in practice and in action. I have visited her at her home. I have seen how she respects Mr. Ogwar, at Smart Ogwar. And I want Madam Speaker in one minute to tell a story how I discovered this. One time as a, a member of uh, the Minister for State for Planning in the Ministry of Finance, there was an issue of release of money to national medical stores. And she came here on the floor of the house and attacked me aggressively. And she said, in fact, the blood of those who are dying now is in the hands of this young man. <laughs> she was here. And when I went to, I was going to see somebody in Chirudu, people surrounded me and they almost lynched me. I became scared, Madam Speaker. I called Mr. Ogwal, Mr. Smart Ogwal, for two reasons. I wanted to know whether Mama had an issue at home because she had never attacked anybody in the house like she attacked me. But secondly, I also wanted to report her so that in case something happens <laughs> and he's here. Mr. Ogwar came, he drove, we sat in his car, a pickup, and I narrated my story and my fears. Two days later, I met Cecilia Ogwar here in the lounge, and she looked at me and said, you wanted us to divorce, we are not going to divorce. <laughs> and I knew, and I knew that Mr. Ogwal had done his job. I thank you so much, Mr. Ogwal. Madam Speaker, she was a prayer warrior and an intercessor to the extent that she had earned her permanent place on the program of the National Prayer Breakfast. Every third or fourth of October, she would call me and say, son, what, what, now what role are you giving me at the prayer breakfast? And she one of the people who could play and speak to God about somebody in the room without fear or favor. For the last few months, I know she has seen God darkly through the lenses of this terrible disease that she suffered. But now last Thursday, she faced God face to face. I know I'm comforted that as a believer, she's seated on the right hand side of the Creator. She's seated on the right hand side of Creator because we believe in Matthew 25, 32 and other verses that we shall be separated according to what we do on earth. And I think what she did, she was a voice to the least in our community. She was a voice to those who had no voice. And Mama Cecilia Ogwal, we honor you. We are very happy that you contributed everything you had in your life. She was honored to have a long life in politics. Many of, the, many of us never have that opportunity, but she used it greatly to impact the world. And I think she lived a life of purpose, a life of love, and a life of joy. Goodbye, Mama Cecilia Ogwal. Thank you. Of recent, everybody. I stand here to support the motion moved by the right Honorable Prime Minister. Right Honorable Speaker, I learned with deep sorrow the untimely death of our comrade, Honorable Imat Cecilia Ogwal Atim, who passed away on 18th January 2024 in India. Right Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the Office of the Vice President and on my own behalf, and indeed on behalf of the people of Katakui District, I would like to extend sincere condolences to her family, the people of Lango, the Parliament of Uganda, and the entire country at large. Right Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Cecilia Gual was a great stateswoman who loved her country and she will be missed dearly by all the people of Uganda and particularly us, the women and girls. Right Honorable Speaker, 
I therefore would like to reiterate what I had said before, that I have stood up to support the motion moved by the Right Honourable Prime Minister, and I would like to state that I entirely associate myself with all the contents of the motion. We can speak so many things about the Honourable Cecilio Gual, but I would like to keep it to the motion which the Right Honourable has moved. I pray that the Almighty God grants the entire family the courage and the strength to go through this trying moment. And I would like to thank His Excellency, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, the President of the Republic of Uganda, for according her an official burial and related the Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to thank you for convening a special session to allow us to pay tribute to, to her. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, VP. And uh, Dennis? Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Colleagues, I rise to support the motion as moved by the Right Honourable Prime Minister, and in loving memory of the late Honourable Atat Cecilia Ogwal, I wish to pay tribute to her in three fronts. First of all, Right Honourable Speaker, I wish to recollect my maiden meeting with the Honorable Atat while I was a child. Two, I also wish to put on record the moment Honorable Atat felt a bit disappointed in me or with me in my political life. And three, I will state this moment that changed my worldview on who Honorable Atat Cecilia was. Right, Honorable Speaker, in 1994, at the age of 14, while a student at Lango College, and Lango College equally has handsome men, <laughs> and they are here in this parliament. I had the opportunity to represent the children of Northern Uganda at the parliamentary mock debate during CA when the Constituent Assembly was considering the promulgation of the 1995 Constitution. That formed my maiden meeting with the Honorable Atat at the age of 14, senior one, representing the children of Northern Uganda. What we debated then was what the children of Uganda thought would be embedded in our national constitution as the rights of the children of Uganda. And that forms part of chapter four of our national constitution. Right Honorable Speaker, in 2001-2002, I was a youth leader as chairperson District Youth Council of Lira and a member of the National Executive Committee of the National Youth Council of Uganda. During that transitional process from the movement system to full multipartism, we all know that the Honorable Atat's political origin is Uganda People's Congress and that must be put on record. Right Honorable Speaker, while in leadership as a youth, the Honorable Atat managed to persuade all the youth leaders to join Uganda People's Congress, with the exception of Obua Dennis Amson, the then District Youth Council Chairman of Lira and a member of the National Executive Committee. But I want to state that much as Atat felt disappointed, 
She respected my opinion. And I want to salute her for that. All the two district youth councillors were UPC. The district delegate to the National Youth Council was turned to UPC. My secretary for finance, who is the current chairman LC5 of Dokolo district on FDC ticket and one of their national vice chairpersons, was equally taken by Honorable Atat. I remained where I was. Later on, when I narrated to the Honorable Atat why I made a choice to support the movement then, which is currently the National Resistance Movement. I told her my childhood story to the effect that in 1986, 1987, when the NRA took over power, there was a notorious character called Ojuko. Ojuko came to Lango, traversed the entire Lango. But I still recall as a child Ojuko driving up to Abako to look for a getter. We walked with the family from Abako up to Lira and ended up at the home of one of my maternal uncles. I still recall as a child. And when I told her that, that formed the basis why I support the movement, why I support President Museveni, why I support the National Resistance Movement because they saved the life of Obua and family when he was young. And she respected that. That said, Honorable Speaker. There is an order. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable Members, I'm going to limit the time, so you should be able to, yes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I think, Right Honorable Speaker, you guided uh, us well, that let's concentrate on the good deeds and not invoke politics. Uh, otherwise, I, the way you can see the proceedings, the chief whip is actually taking us political. Yes. And you can also open the, the, the Pandora's box in that regard. <laughs> Council. Council. Honorable Bua Dennis is talking, he's saying Honorable Tat was a tolerant lady and we would respect everybody's views. That's all he's saying. And uh, much as he refused to join UPC, he still remained where he was and Atat was okay with that. Can you conclude? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and I hold um, the FDC whip in high regard. Finally, Right Honorable Speaker, one moment that I will live to remember was in 2012, when Lango was confronted with the land conflict in Otuke. That led to the death of one of the cultural leaders. We assembled as members of the Lango Parliamentary Group and had a visit to Otuke district. While in Otuke, Atat played the role of an Atat in the culture of Lango. The situation was exceedingly volatile. That meeting of Otuke culminated into another meeting with the president at Raketura on the land question. And that was again another very, very volatile meeting. It took the wisdom of the Honorable Atat lying here. It took the knowledge of the Honorable Atat. It took the understanding and the wealth of experience. That is the elder I am talking about. That in any society, there is always this one elder that everyone would coalesce around when it comes to a critical moment when the storm is there and a tat would be that elder for Lango. Thank you. When that storm of land was there, a tat was the only one who could calm the storm in the presence of the president. Honorable Atat, I want to thank you, and I want to say, your commitment 
your dedication, your zeal, your stamina in fighting for the cause you believed in will live as your legacy. We can only promise as Joshua generation, as envisaged in the Bible, that we will try our best to follow in your footstep. Rest in peace, Honorable Atat Sicilia. Thank you, thank you. Agenda. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I pay tribute to a woman who has broken the glass ceiling for the other women in this country. When we talk about breaking the glass ceiling, what do we say? We are saying a woman who has broken barriers that would otherwise have stopped her from ascending to that powerful position. Honorable Cecilia Gual stood fast uh, with men, a period where standing with men as a woman was not easy. They were here with Honorable Winnie Bianima as those who stood, Honorable Speciosa Kazibwe, they were less than five women who had stood with men. Number two, Honorable Cecilia Gual was Assistant Secretary General of a political party a position that in most cases would be occupied by men, but she occupied that position. Honorable Cecilia Ogwal was a person, a woman who championed what was always put as the issues that are championed by men. In most circumstances, Cecilia was the one who drove the multi-party agenda, and men followed her to drive that multi-party agenda. She drove in northern Uganda the land question, and the men in northern Uganda followed her on the land question to ensure that the customary land ownership was integrated in the constitution of Uganda with the likes of the Chief Justice. That was Honorable Cecilia Gual. The issues that were male-dominated, she drove them. That's what we call in gender issue, breaking the barriers breaking the barriers where women would not otherwise be in, issues that women would otherwise not be doing. She, in the Constituents' Assembly, with the likes of Honorable Matembe, with the likes of Honorable Winnie Bianima, with the likes of Speciosa and others, institutionalized affirmative action in the Constitution. For most of the women here, we have come on affirmative action. She will forever be remembered for institutionalizing women issues, institutionalizing the policy, the laws. She fought for gender-based violence. That's why today we are in this color. She even ensured that everything she talked about, be it democracy, be it human rights, it was engendered. She made sure every time she would remain, remind the president, remind this parliament, remind everybody to number one, include women. Number two, ensure that girl child are protected and ensure that women's issues are mainstreamed in everything. I salute you, Honorable Cecilia Gwala. Thank, thank you. you. We have a condolence message.